Well, good day, everyone, all around this world, around this entire globe. God is going to bless you today. He's going to do above and beyond what you can ask or imagine. So as you're watching all over the world, expect, and I, I want to tell you something, it is not your job to figure out the how. It's your job to have the faith. If you believe God, he'll do it his way. But all you have to do is believe. Well, I'm honored to have Mina Holmes with me on my show today. She is the actual, uh, she's uh, one of the advisors of the actual POTUS Shield. That's the uh, presidential prayer for like President Trump. She is one of the top ones on the council. So we're honored to have her with us. This woman is amazing. Mina Holmes, welcome to the Golden Rule Show. Thank you, Dr. Rivers. Thank you for having me. Thank God you. bless you. This woman lives and walks in, in so much favor. Mina, could, could you explain to the audience about God's favor, just how it's worked in your life? Well, God's favor is uh, beyond my thinking. You know, a lot of things that happened to me, I haven't even thought about. For example, getting to the White House, with, uh, and I actually brought Cindy Jacobs into the White House. And this is the week before President Trump's uh, inauguration, a totally unexpected. We were walking around without anybody following us to the Rose Garden and to the office building and to even to the press room. We pray and anoint every seat. And then I saw, okay, CBS, ABC, NBC. <laughs> and I get to uh, meet a lot of ambassadors. You know, I go to their house, their garden. I mean, it's like, hey, I, I am not an official. I'm a civilian and uh, you know I'm from out of this country I became a citizen but uh, I get to do a lot of things that uh, I haven't even thought about I've been asked the questions that the thought never entered into my mind such as ambassadors ask me so how do we build a nation after the war is over or like what do you think about this uh, war situation oh I mean gosh so I think though everybody has the uh, a blueprint of God. God yes, wants yes. you to, great, do, to do great things, everyone, because God doesn't play favor. But I feel from my experience, the questions are we tapping into it. So if we have a chance later, I'd love to share. How do we, how did I tap into this favor? favor of God. You see people, what she's talking about is so important because there's no way that you can fulfill God's word in your own strength. There's no way. There, there's no way you're able to walk this thing out without God. What this woman said is favor had her walking around the White House. That, that's God. People, we have to make God bigger and the world smaller. God has been challenging me all week. I mean, this, this is what he challenged me in. He's, he's, he's been challenging me on my mentality. Mm. And this is what he said. He said, he said, uh, the, the, the spirit realm is above the natural. Mm. And he said, he said, your consciousness, if you're not God conscious, God's thoughts are bigger than thoughts of the world. So God wants us to put God's thoughts in our consciousness. And those thoughts, they will overrule any natural thing. So basically, it's getting an idea from God, a thought from God, and making that thought the biggest thing in the world in our perception. And then he can manifest it. He's, can you exactly. share some, some? Yeah, I agree, <clears throat> agree with you. By, uh, nat by our human natural mind, we cannot be that. Yes. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we are full of flesh. Yes. You know, and uh, we do not have experience that we, can, we cannot do. Uh, a little bit about my experience. I was a Christian since 14. So I've been, you know, very nice. And uh, like a lot of people go to church, you, you clean the <laughs> restroom, you know, you do whatever, you paint the faces with something, something. Yeah, yeah. Until one day I cry out to God. I say, well, God, I'm almost, I'm almost 59. What testimony do I have to my children? You know, can I say I walk with the Lord? Can I say, uh, you know, mm. there's a song, mm. you know, you walk with me in the garden. Can I say that? I can't. The reality is actually every month I'm behind my bill. Yes. The reality is, okay, we did make, let's say, $30,000. But our expense is 32000 yeah. <laughs> so, so every year compound, then you kind of, okay, your credit card bill, uh, yes, uh, yes. you know, build up. It's like, well, Lord, 
what testimony do I have? Can I say to my children, you know, I'm really sad. So key number one, cry out to God. He will answer you. Cry out to God. Do you hear that, people? That's the thing. When you cry out to God, he will hear, go, Mina. So he asked, so ask God, so what's wrong with me? I haven't I done my best. And I yes. work hard. I work at the church. You know, yes. what, what else can I do? You know, what's wrong with me? Yes. You know, so, well, lo and behold, the Lord showed me a vision that I was crawling as a baby to the door. I was crying. I said, well, my parents, why did you leave me? Well, they went to work, but I was a baby I didn't know. From there on, I saw nobody liked me. My parents didn't love me. And I grew up in a big family of six children. I'm in the middle. Nobody pay attention. So that kind of reinforced. I get noticed only because I'm an outstanding student. Yes. You know, I, because I achieve. But that wasn't because of love. So that made me think of God in that way. Okay, uh -huh. God, you know, if I'm not good enough, yes. I don't get paid attention. Therefore, I get to chase after these things yes. all my life. But what's wrong? So I, I, I asked God, so what's wrong, you know? Why did you leave me at this day, crying like that every day? Why did you let me do all these bad decisions? It ended up having mistakes yes. all my life. Not a lot, a lot, right. but the, you know, yeah, few, yeah. few bad ones, you pay big price for it. Yeah. God, how could you? He says, no. I am your heavenly father. I'm not your earthly father. Didn't, didn't I tell you two days ago? He did. Two days ago, he gave me a dream. I told my husband when I woke up. Oh, I said, well, God wrote me a note in the sky. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I woke up. I said, wow, there's a note. Well, before you even ask, God already provided the note two days before wow. that. So you ask, God knew he will give you answer even ahead of time. So I said, okay. I get it. You will never leave me for, nor forsake me. So my question is, do I believe you? Mm. Do I believe you? Can, I couldn't, honestly, uh, up to that point, because I, I saw too many mistakes in my life. I couldn't believe it. But I said, okay, I'm going to make a decision. I will believe you. So if I will believe you, that means, okay, then I made a mistake on my own. Therefore, I'm sorry. All my life, I hated you but I dare not say it. I hated God because I thought he wasn't good enough to me. He let me make mistakes. You know, so I ask God for, for uh, forgiveness for hating him and hating myself. A lot of Christians hate yourself because you knew better. As a uh, Lutheran background, we knew better. Yeah, yeah. But we couldn't perform. That's the problem. So we, we are in constant guilt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why did I do that? Oh, I'm not good enough. Yes, I know I'm supposed to love the person, but I can't. So for me, the trans uh, transform transformation came after I realized, okay, I accept God loved me, and I forgive him. I, kept, I forgive myself. I have a new start. I became the true daughter of God. Amen. That was the beginning point. You had to become the true son and daughter of God. Yes. When you accept, he loves you, he will not yes. leave you nor forsake you. So things started to uh, happen, you know. In other words, I really believe God has gifts or channels. He keeps talking to us, but we couldn't hear him or see him. I asked God, God, let me see you, let me hear you. So he started to show me things. Yeah. One day he gave me a dream, it's of a check, something like a $328,000 oh, $328, check as a Solomon of a case we have. Mm -hmm. Then I saw TV, uh, King Clement says, oh, God's going to give you double portion. I said, yes, I take it. So take it. When prophets announce, he will give a double portion, you take it. Yes, yes, okay? yes, yes. That because all the promise applies to you, but you have to believe it and take it. So I said, I took it. Well, eight months later, lo and behold, we won a case that was dead for 10 years. <laughs> of that amount. Wow. Uh, that paid up a lot of uh, debts and bills, and uh, we get to support a lot of ministries. That was the turning point of our finance, and we get to bless not only ourselves and uh, many other ministries. So that was, that was the beginning of my Alice in the Wonderland life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I love about what you're talking about, people... Let me tell you one thing. 
The, it's the people with the pure hearts. The pure hearts will see God. God is not looking for the most skilled mind. He's not looking for the most intellectual person. He's looking for the one with the pure heart. And, and as you're talking, as I, as I had lunch and I met you in, in, in Oregon last week, your heart is pure. And God, in this day and hour, people, he's looking for a heart that he can move through. And as I was sharing earlier uh, about this is what I got, is a battle over our consciousness. There's the, this is where the battle lies in every believer. This is why in Corinthians he says, cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now watch this. I said, God, where does it start? He said, in your thoughts. So, so, so the minute that you have a bad thought, a bad thought just entered into your God zone. And you have to move that thought out of the God zone and put the God thought back in that zone. And what happens is, I'm telling you guys, I've watched amazing things happen. I'm going to share something. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you in a second. This is, <clears throat> what, no, what, what happens is this, is God, God showed me this. He said, time is not redeemed. Wait, time? What do you mean? He says, I said I had to, I had to actually, actually, man, God said in the scriptures, the time had to be redeemed because the days are evil. I said, explain to me. He said, son, everything in the spirit realm is now. He said, every prophetic word over your life is right now. Why? Because in the spirit realm, it's only now. Mm -hmm. It's eternal. So he said, time has allowed demons to enter in and steal your promises. Yeah. <laughs> he says, when, when I give you a word and you hold it right now, nobody can steal it. But if you put it in time, so every prophetic word I got, I mean, I would, I would say, I would say yes and amen, and I would look like I received it, but I thought it meant later. Mm -hmm. And God says, it means right now, because God, guys, in, in, in eternity, there's only now. Yes. So, Mina, go, go ahead. Yes, agree. The battleground really is right here. Yes. And you're talking about God's frequency. That's, that's what I did next. Okay, I got uh, from somewhere the idea. I had to put on worship music yes. on 24 hours. So I put me in the state of worshiping. In other words, the attention is on God mm. now. I worship God. I'm not worshiping my problem. Mm. Put my attention in God's uh, frequency. Okay, so started, started to change my mind, and uh, I keep watching my, uh, myself with the Word of God and the great teachings. Yes. Okay. And so I, I really believe that it started to open up myself to God, you yes. know, so I can be imprinted on what he wants to print. Ah, so yeah. I was driving. I was saying, well, God, I want to see you. Jesus showed up, actually. Really, he showed up right in front of my face. I was like, wow, I'm looking at this person, his deep love, as if I'm the only person on earth. Oh, God, I cannot describe the feeling. Then suddenly, I start to see the sorrow in his eyes. I quickly turned away. Later, months later, I asked, I said, oh, God, I want to see you. The voice come to me, but you don't want to see me. I'm thinking, oh, yes, mm. I know. We enjoy God's love, but we don't want his burden. Oh, wow. Did you hear that? We enjoy God's love, but we don't want his burden. What is wow. his burden? That is to share his love. Okay, so I was like, oh my God, that's, that is true. I was so afraid you would send me to Africa. Oh. <laughs> Middle East to somewhere to suffer. <laughs> but he said, well, those people love me more than you do, but they don't have a chance. Uh. That's what he said. Those people love me more than you do, but they don't have a chance. What are I going to do about it? I was like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Honestly, that's what happened. <laughs> well, so opportunity comes. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, Chinese uh, crisis is also opportunity. It's uh, one word of two sides. So one day I did uh, run into a lady who was... Uh, silently crying, you know, uh, she was in distress. So I asked her what happened to her. 
she said it was somebody came and uh, slapped her on the face. And this happened in our community. I said, what happened? Well, that because during the Ramadan, she wasn't supposed to eat sandwich, but she did. I couldn't believe it. You know, such things happen in America. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I started to uh, get close to her and uh, get to know her story and finding out there are a lot of Arabic uh, refugees, Christians, they came here and uh, because uh, they suffer persecution in their homeland, but they did not come with skills mm. or high education. Mm. So there's a community of people right here needs help. So because of her, I get to know other Arabic Christians. So that opened up other chapter of the political involvement. You know, you see, when you ask God and he starts to walk you into above what you can't imagine, it's the most peaceful place in the world because you know God has to perform the next step. Every intellectual Christian that has everything, if you have to know everything first, you will never move with God. If you have to understand it in your intellect, you will never move in the bigness of God because God said he can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or imagine. Now, now, now people, that's a realm that you can't track in. That's a realm that God needs to funnel. This is what he spoke to me, uh, Mina. He says, when I give you a word, I need it filtered through your spirit, not through your intellect. Mm -hmm. And he said, most people filter words through their intellect and get a carnal understanding of a supernatural word that may be for 15 years down the road or 30 years down the road. As we were at the conference, I, a gentleman I prophesied to, uh, God, the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, in the next 15 years, what, what, what actually life is like now, this day will be like the 1500s. And I said, well, he said, because I'm accelerating things. So I'm speeding things up on my time grid. So, so if you get locked into the now, you'll miss his eternity. Yes. It is, it, it is the now word. You know, now, yes. now that's... Uh, the, uh, the event I ran into this lady was barely about three, three and a half years ago. Yeah. Since then, I've been involved with the Congress. You know, since then, I've been involved with helping the, you know, passing message to Egyptian government, the Pope. Yes. You know, involved with, with, with a lot of people in the high places. I mean, can you imagine a civilian like me? I wasn't even a native born, but God would allow me to be in the position. Jesus. I wasn't even pursuing it. I was, I was only say, okay, whatever you want to do. Then he provided the lady, the smallest of the lady who was weeping. Yes. Opened Jesus. the door Jesus. of need. So when you see, I am highly encourage you, when you pass by a person, it may be God arranged you an opportunity to open the door. Yeah. That person may not dress up like the way you, you imagined it to be, but usually it's not because God tests our heart first. Can he trust you? Ah. Can he trust me with that situation? You know, am I, am I simple or pure in heart enough? Because then we can see the kingdom of God. Yes. Because you see the world through his eyes. Then you see love and compassion. He provides the means. And he, opened, he opens the doors. You know, I, I, I don't think we have enough time today to talk about all the events. But it's just mind-boggling. Oh, you know, we have... I, mean, I even have reporters from Beijing to come to interview me. They, they, are, they have about the, the biggest network. And the, that's during when uh, the witches in America try to curse President Trump. And the churches here are supposed to pray for Trump. Okay. And they think I represent the American church. Is that pretty funny? <laughs> I'm not, of course not. <laughs> but this is outlandish things of many, many things yes. that happen, happen to me. And, the, and it continues on, too. Wow. You see, what I want to say as I close is this. People, take off your intellect. Your intellect is not needed in this. Your obedience to a God that's made you bigger than your intellect the actual days that we're heading into now, people can't imagine what the world's going to look like. Yeah. But God needs a people that can filter his word through their spirit, not through their intellect. 
people out there watching all over the world, I believe there's been an anointing on this show that, that if, if you receive this anointing, it will take you into a dimension of God that's above and beyond what you can ask or think. Mina's here because of the favor of God on her life. And if you, and if you heard, she is not the likely candidate to be doing what she's doing in the world now. Someone's helping her. It's the spirit of God. People, I pray over every one of you in Africa, in China, in the Middle East, those of you watching right now, we stand in agreement that you have a God encounter, an encounter with the living God that changes your life. I'm Dr. Rivers, and this is the Golden Rule Show. Thank you very much. Amen.